Hello students, I am Monica Dixit, Noida International University, Assistant Professor in Electronics and Communication Department in School of Engineering and Technology. Today in this lecture, we will discuss about the most important component of worldwide communication that is satellite communication. So let me discuss about the satellite communication. A communication satellite may be looked upon as a big microwave uh, repeater body right where the satellite consists of so many numbers of transponders where transponders receives the incoming signal modify them and sends back them to the earth station at the receiver end we will see this uh, operation and working of satellite with help of the block diagram before that i would like to explain you that the satellite works in the operating frequency range of 1 gigahertz to 50 gigahertz One to fifty gigahertz is the operating range for the satellite communication, and the techniques with on which the satellite communication operates is the FDM. This is the oldest technique, but nowadays TDM is also being used. Where FDM stands for frequency division multiplexing and TDM for time division multiplexing. We will move further. I would like to tell you how the satellite revolves around the earth. As we all know, satellite is an heavenly body which moves around the earth in a elliptical or circular orbit. To carry on the motion of satellite in circular orbit, they follow, they follow only two simple laws. The first law which states that the gravitational force of earth due to the gravity of earth must be equal to Sg. The gravitational force must be equal to the mass of the earth multiplied by the gravitational force G and the ratio of capital R by small r whole square where capital R is the radius of earth and it is 6370 kilometers where small r is the distance of satellite from the center of the earth. If this is the center of the earth then the distance of this satellite from the center of the earth is a small r, right? The second law states that the centrifugal force which trying to pull the satellite away from the earth is Fc centrifugal force is equal to m multiplied by small r multiplied by omega square where m is again the mass of the earth r is again the center the distance of the satellite from the center of the earth and omega square is the angular frequency so these are the two basic laws on which the motion of satellite depends to be in circular manner to take on the stable circular motion the Fg must be equal to the Fc. This condition is necessary for a stable circular orbital movement of satellite around the earth. As I already told you, satellite is a body which consists of number of transponders in it. So this, the number of transponders may vary from 12 to 20 transponders in a satellite with the bandwidth limited to 30 to 50 megahertz. It means each transponder has a limited bandwidth of 30 to 50 megahertz. The function, the main function of transponder is to amplify the signal, process it and sends it back to the receiver for broadcasting purposes. 
the various applications of satellite are weather forecasting television and radio broadcasting gps which is global positioning system and your internet communication with the help of the block diagram we can go in clear and precise working of satellite communication so let's have a look This is the very basic block diagram of satellite communication. Here the main components you can see in the block diagram are the earth stations and the transponder. Where the working is like that, it starts from the user at the transmitter side. This is your receiver side. At the transmitter side, user will send or generates the baseband signal which is nothing but the information carrying signal. This signal will go to the earth station with the help of a telephonic link which will be used in terrestrial link right this is a dedicated link the earth station then process the signal and with the help of the antenna which is a parabolic dish antenna it will be sent to the satellite from here the baseband signal is reached to the satellite transponder with the help of this parabolic dish antenna now what happens at this transponder as the signal receives at transponder the transponder will modify do the modulation amplification and other analysis processes it will then after the analysis of the signal and after processing it the transponder will send it back to the dish antenna number 2 at the receiver end the antenna will receive the same signal and it will send it to the earth station number 2 which is on the receiver side the earth station then again uh, detect the information from that signal and sends it back to the user for broadcasting. As the simple example is like, as the media is taking a, in an interview of like PM of India and we are watching, uh, we are watching this interview at the television sets in, at our home. In this way you looked how the incoming signal goes to the receiver side. This is, this takes place in the same way as for, we can take an example of media taking an interview of the Prime Minister of India and we all individuals are watching it on our television sets at our home at the instant at the same time. This is, this is what the broadcasting through the satellite. Next we will move upon to the, this process. There are two, uh, another main things are like your uplink frequency and the downlink frequency. Uplink frequency is the frequency sends from the earth station at the transmitter side to the transponder of the satellite. This frequency is known as uplink frequency and the frequency signal which is sends from transponder to the earth to the antenna of receiver side is known as the downlink frequency. In common use we use the C band for the satellite communication, I will explain further what is C band. In C band, the uplink frequency is designated as 4 kilohertz. 
sorry it is 6 kilohertz 6 gigahertz and at the downlink frequency it is 4 gigahertz now we will move further about the uplink and downlink c band transactions The frequencies are allocated in bandwise system which is nothing but the electromagnetic spectrum has divided into several ranges of frequencies known as bands. Some bands, these bands are given some names like C band, KU band, KA band, where C band has the frequency of 6 gigahertz at the uplink and 4 gigahertz at the downlink. KU band has the uplink frequency of 12, 14 gigahertz and downlink frequency of 12 gigahertz. Similarly, KA band has the uplink frequency of 30 gigahertz and downlink frequency of 21 gigahertz. Now you can see that the uplink frequency is always higher than the downlink frequency. The reason behind this is that when the signal is going from earth station 1 to the transponder of satellite, transponder modifies the signal and it will frequency down the signal in such a manner that it will not interfere with the incoming signal. So the frequency reduces as you can see from 4, 12, 21 and like that for different different bands. This frequency allocation is a very complicated process which needs the coordination and proper planning at the international level and it will be done as per the ITU. ITU is the International Telecommunication Union which decides the range of frequencies for the particular bands. There are several satellite services which we can get from the satellite. The some services are fixed satellite service, which is dedicated to telephonic connections. Second service which we get from satellite is your mobile satellite service. Third one is your navigational satellite service which is used by the military or defense sectors. Fourth one is your internet satellite service. And fifth one is your meteorological satellite service which is used basically in case of disaster, right. As I discussed earlier, satellites are placed in geostationary orbits. Other satellites are also there which are placed in such orbits. These three types of orbits are, first one is your GEO, geostationary earth orbit, second one is LEO, low earth orbit and third one is your MEO, medium earth orbit. The satellites which are placed in GEO which is geostationary earth orbit 
are synchronous to the earth and if we looked upon them from the fixed point on earth, we, we can find that this, this satellite, this orbit is fixed. In GEO, around 3 satellites are placed and the lifetime period of such orbits, such satellites is 15 years. LEO, the satellite placed in LEO, low earth orbits have the life expectancy of 3 to 8 years, which is very low and it requires 20 to 200 or even more satellites for their functionality, which is a huge amount. MEO is the medium earth orbits, the satellites placed in MEO are about 12 satellites are placed, which are although larger than the GEO, but less in quantity than the LEO. So, we can prefer MEO than GEO. Now, we see the applications of GEO, LEO and MEO. GEO, geostationary earth orbits are used for weather, weather forecasting, mobile communication, internet communication and all the basic communications we are using at our homes. LEO is the low earth orbit which is basically used for remote sensing. MEO is used where the large population has to be covered. So, these are the various application areas for these orbits. This all for the session. Uh, here I am concluded. I am concluding my session with saying that satellites are using nowadays at a wide range, but the fibers are taking advantage over it. Nowadays fibers are basically preferred over satellites, but satellites are still on working and they will be there forever because in disaster case when there is flood and all other things, satellite is the only thing which can reach to the uh, operations. So, satellite will be there for all the years ahead. So, thank you for the session. And in our next lecture, we will discuss about the MAC, which is the access control protocol for the satellite. Thank you.